Benny und Dorina, jeweils von Chaos Macht Schule Berlin bzw. Hamburg, sind heute hier, um etwas uns um, die, um dieses Projekt etwas näher zu bringen, zu erzählen, was so passiert und ähm, wie das so abläuft und wie man die Technik, mit der wir ja heutzutage jeden Tag leben, auch in den Schulen näher zu bringen. Ähm, um ein Beispiel zu bringen, wer hat hier Abi gemacht mit Informatik? Wer hatte diese Möglichkeit? Das sind nicht viele. Jetzt stellt euch mal vor, an jeder Schule gäbe es so ein Angebot. Wer von euch hätte gerne Informatik in der Schule gemacht? Das sind mehr Leute. So. Unsere Speaker werden uns nun erzählen, wie Informatik an Schulen ordentlich rübergebracht werden kann. Dankeschön. Okay, vielen Dank, dass wir hier das Projekt Chaos macht Schule vorstellen dürfen. Wir, das sind Benny mit bei Chaos macht Schule in Berlin aktiv und ich, Dorina, in Hamburg bzw. auch in Lübeck. Ähm, außerdem möchte ich nochmal großen Dank an Steffen aus Mannheim, ne? aus Mannheim äh, danken, weil bis heute früh nicht feststand, ob ich hier wirklich stehen kann und er wäre sonst als Backup eingesprungen. Vielen, vielen Dank an Stefan. Hello, here's the translation from C3 Lingo. We're here representing very many Chaos Does School people across the nation. Chaos Does School is a build on, is a education initiative. With the goal of supporting media competence and technical understanding among students. We'd like to tell you why this project is so important to us and close to our hearts. We live in a world of digital change. Lots of so there are a lot of um, politics involved and companies and active teachers. So which are only a few type of people and the most of them um, living outside of our filter bubble and the space we are comfortable in. And they just say, oh, well, because everyone is using Facebook, I have to do it as well. And of course, daughter collection is totally normal. Um, this acceptance of things which, norm which can be different, um, we find we have to criticize here. We want, we want citizens to notice the space that they have and understand technology and what's behind it. And that's why Chaos Does School has started this project for the new generation that is thinking critically about technology, answering questions that can't quite be answered by teachers in schools. That's our starting part. Here are some news. New news from the past weeks, you can say. I don't know how it's for you, but for me, in the digital world, in the news, there's a lot happening. And it was always like this, but it seems to become more. And when you're interested into it, it can be difficult even to follow it. There's a lot of for example, the new BND law, thanks to the Snowden case, it's been hard to combine that which is happening with BND law with German law. What happened is the opposite. You've probably noticed the Watching has been expanded and new laws have been expanded. 
but there haven't been any critical uh, following in the press about this. For example, the that presses should pay money to link to journalistic contents. Journalism in this age hasn't figured out how to finance itself and there's too little money in this area. If, so, if search engines didn't show these things, then it would be even more hidden, and that's a problem. This law went to presses, and you don't show enough critical things about this law. You should also report positive things about this law in the future. This isn't very... There is a special example for this. So, so when the social democrats in Germany like something on Facebook and suddenly and oh, which says that politics have uh, and politicians and other th and other people have to check if news are fake or not which means that um, there's a special law on the European side which means that if you have a link to a special website you take care of what happens um, on this side where you link to so there are a lot of stories about it and it's always the same they always made a decision they make a decision and afterwards um, you ask yourself when you think about the techniques um, if this is really useful because normal because normally there's no criticism. There's no one who asks if this is really useful. And yes, people ask for this, but it's not happening. Yeah, in this, well, all people at the Congress are in a group of people who think about uh, different um different things about um, data security, about security itself, about safety in the internet. But if we go out of this area and talk to other people who are not used to this topic, um, it's not the topic where all the people are interested about and not all the people care for it. So yes, of course we can talk to, him, to them how to make things better, but we have the knowledge, but we don't have, we haven't, um, get this knowledge into the, pe into the people outside of this community. And now concretely to Chaos's school and the map, on the map you can see where we are active in Germany, at least the ones we know of. Chaos does school was started in 2007 with two groups. That was Schools asked if the CCC could come and talk about so these things, and the project has been here since 10 years. It's a decentralized organization, which means the activities are responsible, are the people who are active in the different regions are responsible for what happens, and there's no centralized agenda of what should happen, but it lives instead based on the knowledge and interests of those who are regionally active. It's important to understand these are people who are active in the CCC with technical background, mostly. These people are not teachers, but we go to schools to work with children and it tends to work relatively well. The main focus group are students in schools. We work also with teachers and 
to use teachers as multiplicators and to reach more people. We do with the students relatively different, diverse topics, um, particularly given the diverse interests of those who participate. For example, Löten, soldering, and critically questioning of technology, data security, personal privacy. Sometimes we are called to schools if there's bullying issues. Then we usually say we are tech, um, te technicians, um, but the schools often still want us to have us there and to talk about technical technical issues like how social social networks uh, work and how that bullying works on social networks. When we work with teachers, it usually has to do with giving teachers um, technical tools about how they can talk with students about these topics and it is a informational source for teachers. The parents come to us because they have, they need um, information particularly about per software for protecting children on the internet. What we um, advise when should be they children be in the internet? When should they uh, be allowed to play games online? Discussing with parents and making it clear to them that it's uh, not so useful to keep children away from the whole digital world, but rather together the discovering the world, the digital world. The, there is the metaphor, don't make the world safe for children, but make children safe for the world. Don't just let them jump into the world. They'll go over the fence anyway, eventually, but... That's the direction it tends to go. So these are the main topics. Of course, there are more groups of people who work for that. And Benny now will describe which ones. So 10 years ago, we started alone. Um, and today, there are a lot of groups who start working in this area. So at the beginning, we asked people if they have computer science in school, and a lot of them don't. But now, um, but now more and more schools get this topic on their agenda. And um, yes, we have some of them on the board, and some of them um, we don't know. And there are more and more groups So what we show there are very small um, groups and most of them um, just get up, because, uh, just work because there are a lot of people who do it for free. So there are a lot of groups who just start to um, teach kids how to program. For example, the Coder, Coder Dojo or Jugend Hacked, which start new um, projects and, um, and change the view of the kids on the world itself. And that we have uh, ClickSafe, which, ha which provide information for kids and parents. Or we have Web Days in Berlin and we work with them together. 
and we invite a lot of young people from Germany um, to work um, special papers um, um, to work uh, to discuss with politicians. We work with some of them um, groups together. Some sometimes um, we don't, but these are all very very small. Um, groups of people, and all of them take the work that we should teach in schools, but the system in we are living in and the government doesn't work yet on these issues. So this is our spot where we are today. So of course the, the, lot, the industry is working on these topics as well. A lot of IT companies have groups for young people. Here we have two articles about them, which are published on Heiser. One of them is from Apple, and one of them is from Microsoft. And they have, um, they have, well, the problem by doing this is actually um, that they are companies, and they have, um, um, and they want to make money with it. So this is a big, a big issue, because at the end um, they want to build people who can code, so that they, because they need them in their companies. But this is not how it should work. Um, we want to have ed education which is not linked um, to companies. The examples of public discussions that Benny showed before show how big the variety is of topics that you need to understand in order to understand um, the digital world. And we've seen that there's already has quite a lot of great things happening in the education sector and also in different other areas. And there's also a lot of money that's earmarked for digitalization in schools, which is great. I don't want to talk about that right now. But instead I want to show that in order to understand this digital world, it's not enough to show students how to use computers in their everyday life or in their work. But it's, this is an important part to show them how to use their computers for homework and for work. But if the focus is only on applying what uh, what we think is important is that people can uh, come into the digital world and in their um, work together. So the 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 word that I like to use is digital. Digital adulthood, maybe, um, which is the fact that you can make your own decisions, you can make good decisions, and what I want to do is I want to transfer this concept to digital, to the digital world, and in order to get there, to be able to understand that, you need to um, really understand the digital world. That includes technology, of course, but it also includes especially when um, right now when we hear politicians talk about um, digital laws, what we ask is whether they actually have understood the technology behind it. But that's even not enough. What we actually need is someone who understands how the internet works beyond the technology as such. How does the internet work? How does the smartphone work? How does WhatsApp transmit my messages? Or whose interests 
are standing behind the um, drivers of political discussions right now. So these questions of what happens in the digital world, we think are also very important. And once you're able to judge that, then you can actually be an active participant and change the digital world. And there's a number of ways where you can change the world. Now, you don't need to study IT in order to do that. Of course, that's one way, but if you code something yourself or if you set up cl a cloud by yourself or if you do Freifunk by yourself, but you can also, as an artist, use technology in your paintings, in your sculptures, or even use technology for political and societal discussions. And we want to show that there's different ways of using this digital world and of changing this digital world. So for us, this digital adulthood means being open for technology, understanding the digital world, but also questioning the digital world. Does it need to be like that? Um, and also to get an idea of how to change the digital world in technology, in ethics, in whatever. And that's something that I think that we think everyone should have in order to be a digital adult. And we think that we can contribute to this actively. We've done quite a lot of theory so far. We've shown you why we want to, why we do what we do. But now we want to show you some more concrete examples, some projects that we're actually doing when we go into schools and what we do with these students. One example, this is a web interface of Open Data City. And this can actually show us how does the internet actually work. This is very basic to get a general idea of how the internet works, to, get, to be able to contribute to discussions. When talking to students about the internet, one thing that we've noticed is that they are actually pretty um, enthusiastic about the internet. This is their reality. This is the world that, that they live in. This is also something for them where they can uh, say, well, yeah, make a cut uh, between the generation, the young generation and the generation to their parents. But if you ask, what do you know exactly about the internet? They normally don't know much about it. The internet for them is like a big black box. They don't know what's going on in the box itself. Many really don't know that when they're using a smartphone app, they're usually communicating with a server that's located somewhere, maybe in China, maybe in the US. And that when you do something on your smartphone, it might not actually happen locally on your smartphone. They can't really imagine where in the internet a message will be transmitted to and from whether it's going to be one smartphone to another smartphone to, to another smartphone or something they just don't know. So one way to deal with that is to do some visualizations. So in this open data city, you can use different kinds of interfaces to to show young kids how routing works. So at the moment, we're in Germany and click on this website. And now our daughter ha has to be transported to the server, server and um, our computer have to be uh, have to communicate with the computer in uh, America. So now the daughter has been routing to America and back. So in the sea itself, in the Atlantic, there are huge cables, and everything is working really, really fast. And if you show these, uh, show the kids these really, really basic things um, in this really easy way on this website, like you can click on all the links in there, 
and and every way uh, every way it is of course um, different. So from time to time, these signals are traveling out of our continent to others. So now we have to answer the question, what's happening if you send one signal from your computer, computer to a different server and back? <laughs> so there is a, one example. So I've done this with a fourth grade uh, class. And we draw a lot. And, and they don't know the word server and they don't know what it means. And, uh, and then someone asked, a girl asked, and uh, now this girl is raising their hands up and asking, so this, does the server can read my messages? And I said, yes, it can. And, and she found that was really bad and that was not what she wanted. Yeah, she told me this was not fair and she did not agree to this. And this shows the approach that we um, have. We want to show them the technology and make it clear to them. We make it very simple for them, of course. But when we explain the technology in a very basic way, we often don't have to explain the problem anymore, but one student raises their hand and shows what the problem is. Can the server read my messages, even though I didn't agree? Another problem we have in schools is often the um, saving of data. We are explicitly asked about this, and it's very difficult to share with people why it's problematic that data is saved, so much data is saved, and there's so few rules about how data is handled. For this, we use the example of Open Data City that compares the space in Berlin that the Stasi um, files took up compared to the files of the NSA when you were to print them out. And we asked them, what do you think about this big box that's coming out of the screen? How far out do you think this goes? How many of you know this by this example? Maybe half and half? If you begin, or you ask, estimate it, well, many parts of the city, then we scroll out, whoa, and it continues going, oh, it's more than Germany, oh, maybe it's many countries in Europe, uh, we continue further out, and... Well, we can stop here. As the students sometimes are, if there are external people there, instead of just their teachers who are boring, at least when they see this example, they wake up. Because that really is quite impressive and shows them that it's incredibly large amounts of data particularly when you compare this with the Stasi. In, yes, in the elementary school, that this example wouldn't be the best, but it, if they've had the Stasi in school, then uh, it will work. With older students, this example works quite well. And with the quote from Gauck, well, can you can you compare them? Maybe. <laughs> mm. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, Open Data City gave us quite a good tool. 
and it's available and you can show it to students. This example is quite good to talk about the topic of the secret services, but also the question, what is saved? And if you visualize the amount of data of the NSA and what else is saved from other institutions, from data communications providers, from Google and Facebook and many others, hotel booking systems, it's just similarly large amounts of data and you compare, you can enter the discussion in this way to, can, to think about the differences between the Stasi and yeah. This is an original screenshot and here's a marking in Berlin. This marker is the Marienstraße 11, the address of the CCC in Berlin. We had to mark it on the map. The next example also has to do with Open Data City. The visualization of the what is of the data from 2010, the data, general data storage, you may have gathered. What does this mean, concretely? Many couldn't answer this question. Uh, the, poli the politician had asked for to receive his personal data that had been saved by private co companies, and this data he he shared and prepared this data with the site online, and the data was presented in a very um, visually pleasing and understandable way. And here's the visualization we see. This is data from six months. Below, we see a line from September 2009. We can see on the map where he was active. But in Berlin, not know, not only what, where he was, but also very clearly in which street he was in. Exactly the street when he moved between cities. And if he took the train or maybe the car. In addition, on the right side, it's compared with other data like which um, phone calls he made or text messages he sent, open tweets he made. All of this, we show this to children and we explain to them that the saving of personal data can be done to prevent terrorism, but Today we only have six months, but we don't know. We can ask what will happen in the future following the new deci uh, decisions. It really is the connection. It's really only the connections that a normal phone has to the towers all around. And even when we explain that, when we tell that to children, they ask us, why, what purpose does this have? Why would they even um, do that? Should I not take my phone anymore now? Um, 
hat man es anders ausgedrückt, wenn ein Junge sagte so, also die Leute, die sowas über andere speichern, die müssen man bestrafen. Recently I was at a comprehensive school and someone, a kid there, he said it very pointedly, the people saving this kind of data about other people, they should be punished. But actually, it's the other way around. The providers that don't save this kind of data, they are punished. So this is the way we it usually works. We just visualize how things are actually happening. We don't make an opinion for them, but they form their own opinions based on these questions when we give them good tools to understand them. To talk about privacy. Oh. We also talk a lot about WhatsApp because students, almost all of them use WhatsApp and that tends to be the most important app that they use in the internet. If you ask in a class, usually all people raise their ha hands except those that don't have a smartphone yet or because maybe their parents don't allow them and many classes even have their own WhatsApp groups and WhatsApp is pretty ubiquitous. WhatsApp likes to analyze um, their users, their user behavior Usually, if you want to find out something about someone else, all you need to know is their phone number. You can get a lot of information on WhatsApp just based on their phone number. You can see their picture, you can see when they were online last, you can see their status. And when using this app, you can always uh, see this just for the moment. <laughs> but in this project, What they did is they just used random phone numbers and continuously looked whether these people, these random people, were online or not. And then they saved this data. And this graph that you see has one person's data usage vis visualized from 0 to 23, or from 0 a.m. to um, 11 a.m. 11 p.m. and you can see how often this person was online in this time. We don't usually distinguish between the red and blue line, but we just ask them to analyze what they see. The first thing they see is that this person sleeps at night. So from midnight till 5 or 6 a.m., he's not active in WhatsApp. So we can think that she would probably be sleeping in this time. So we can see when does this person get up. And this graph is most is highest at 9 p.m. So this is the time when he or she has free time and will be communicating with um, their friends. And then in between, it's probably a work day, it looks like it. Because you can see there's like a break between 12 and 1 p.m., so probably uh, lunch break. What we see is that even though we only have one information about this person when they are online, we can actually see um, the, his schedule for an entire day just from this, and students can actually see that, which is very surprising to them. And then we ask them, how do they think their own graph looks like? And they say, well, in the morning, we usually aren't online because we're at school. <laughs> Obviously, we always laugh about that because we know that um, they probably aren't saying the truth because the teacher is in there. <laughs> And from that, they actually understand that everyone can see this data. And they think this is pretty um, 
scary to see that just from having a phone number, everyone out there can see their um, day, their schedule. And students, they often are active all day. They Once they get up, they um, turn on their smartphone. And then one thing that they see is that this person doesn't really sleep that much. He or she only sleeps four or five hours, and students notice. And then we can ask them, do you think this person can work productively when he or she only sleeps for four or five hours? Or is it good to drive a car at this point? And what happens if someone sleeps too little for years on end? Oh, he might become ill. And then we can tell them that there's someone who might be interested in this data. Maybe someone, maybe an employer might want to know whether his employee works, uh, sleeps too little, and um, actually might be more prone to become ill. So this is more of a very practical example that we show. And this actually works really well. Um, even though we are more on the technical side of things, students tend to be very interested in it. To slowly show you how we discuss privacy with students with an analog game. <laughs> the teachers came to this idea, not the, tec the Technica. On these cards, we see topics that are typically shared in social networks. And the white cards show a type of um, who, what kind of people I would share this information with, with parents, with teachers, with the whole world. There's various variations. The idea is that children should um, organize the topics in the different categories as they think is appropriate. And the idea is that children will see this differently and then we might do it. And there are also differences uh, among the children themselves. And they talk then with one another about why would you open, show everyone the picture of your room? I wouldn't do that. And they can play this also with their teachers. There are topics that are not so relevant to students, but things like the bank information or birth date. Is that public information? Is that private information? But when you call the bank and identify yourself, often they ask for your birth date. And this plays a role and helps bringing, helps to bring um, aha moments. And you come into a discussion with teachers and students. How do you handle your own data? That was a few examples of what we do. We have a lot more, of course. We could have brought them. And just shows a small bit of what we do in chaos. Go goes school in Berlin and Hamburg. But on one side, we think that we've we use with these examples we we create motivation among the students with these examples and it does work as the examples have shown in the anecdotes that students are very much in the position to ask good questions although they don't exactly know very much about technology 
We see as well, although we aren't teachers, but rather technicians, we are also in the position to uh, reach children uh, through these topics. We see for ourselves, we see positive positives for ourselves, our arguments function, work. We see that our thought processes can reach children, and we see what questions the students ask and see what tools they're using. A few years ago, the main tool was Facebook, but today, this is used less and less. A lot of things are happening over WhatsApp. At this point, we should probably say the CCC itself sees many technologies, particularly Facebook, very critically and advise we try to go, we try to con contact children um, in a neutral way rather than, and talk to them about what they actually do rather than saying that certain platforms are evil. What are the good and the bad sides of each technology? Just to think about these things. Who reads my messages. And maybe this also um, can bring students to notice that the CCC does interesting things. And we bring new people into the CCC. This is where we see that it works well for students, but also for us. And how do we bring everything forward? We've shown you the map of where we're active in Germany, but there are a lot of white spaces in this map. Maybe you have interest to, to uh, participate as well. You can. You could do a poll and find a place where you could bring uh, Chaos Does School. You can ask in the CCC if um, support is needed. You can do this separate from us and do or do it for yourself. I'm going to go into school and I will talk to students. And it, since it's important that this information is brought to society, um, if you have teachers who you know, talk to them about technology and they will probably be thankful for all the help they can get. Maybe you have children yourselves. A connection to a school, you will always find it. And maybe you have contact to your old school there, you can ask there as well. We've shown some examples of what you can do. You mustn't have studied computer science, but uh, a general understanding can also uh, be enough. If you have questions, contact us. You'll see our email address. You can reach all the people who are active. You can ask if there are people in your area who are active. If you have questions about what could work or what can I do, you can ask. Well, you can also ask us. We mustn't go, we don't have to go home immediately. You can also ask us here at the Congress about uh, Chaos School School. On the Young Hackers Day, we invite um, young people to participate, and you'll see a lot of young people around, and there's lots of workshops for them on the second day, the Young Hacker Day on day two. There's a list in the wiki of everything that's being provided. 
Maybe that will also be something for you. For K at Chaos Does School, there's also a soldering workshop. Eight-year-olds who've never soldered before. And it's amazing how quickly they can put together a, a, a project much faster than older people. On the third day, there's another opportunity in Chaos West Assembly, Hall 4. There's various initiatives that are meeting in the educational sector um, at 8 p.m. Talk to us. Let's discuss and network together. If you have interest to become in becoming active, just come there and talk to us or with others who are active in other projects. We've reached the end of our talk and are open for your questions and to discuss with you. Here are our sources. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Here's the opportunity to answer questions in the room. We will also answer questions from the internet. We have a teacher asking. She would like to bring these topics like network policy, technology into her teaching. And she asked whether there's some documentation or maybe some teaching material that she can use so that she can do that in their, her own well, teaching. Yeah, we didn't, uh, we're not just here, the CCC, for no reason. We are very decentralized in our organization and there's this address on this display ccc slash schule you can find there in what regions and groups chaos does school is active you can definitely find something there you can also contact us we are very we're gladly offering support more questions from the internet doesn't look like it Thanks for your talk. We in Dresden also are also very active in Chaos Does School, even though we haven't connected much with um, other groups and have done more private stuff. We still struggle with the subject of open source, open knowledge because we haven't found a good way to um, make this accessible to smaller students, to younger students. We want to show them it's important that things are open and extendable and that you can look into the software and look into the code, but how can we m make this accessible to students? Do you guys have approaches for that, ideas? In Hamburg, we haven't very we haven't gotten into this topic very deeply. We have begun uh, with students at the technical school, high school, to look at these things. It depends on the age. Maybe we can speak directly. In Berlin, in Berlin, we haven't done anything. Chaos goes school is decentralized and it depends on the interests of those who participate and the active people. But we haven't done it. But as an example, Wikipedia. Students use this for homework. Usually they end at Wikipedia first and you can talk about Wikipedia and this free knowledge and what is that. Um, how you can personally change these contents 
and interact with others. Okay. Hier, die lange Schlange. Ja, zwei kurze Sachen. Danke für den Vortrag. Um, braucht ihr für morgen denn noch Helfer? I have two short questions. Do you still need helpers for tomorrow, for the Young Hackers Day? And is there already some visualization about Snapchat or something that shows the problems there? For tomorrow, speaking for Chaos Go School, we have enough helpers. But there are many other initiatives that want to do something. Just write an email. If you would like to participate now, we could probably find something to do for you. Regarding Snapchat, Snapchat is very popular for the past, since the past few months, and we've definitely noticed this topic, but we haven't quite uh, decided how to go, how to deal with it, and if any of you have an idea what's relevant, or if you have an idea, let us know, and we would be happy about any information or ideas. Okay. Und ich habe eine Frage. Äh ja, hallo, zwei kurze Kommentare und auch eine Einladung. Ähm ich arbeite für den globalen Dachverband für Bildung. Bitte keine Kommentare. Okay, Entschuldigung. Gut, dann äh ganz schnell ähm mit Copyright, weil meine Frage, es gibt ja jetzt in Europa die äh New Thing New Digital Strategy, ähm wo es um Copyrights geht und da wird im nächsten Jahr ganz viel gemacht, wo auch Schüler und Lehrer immer wieder gegen I work for the Global Association of um, Education and I wanted to ask you about um, copyright because there's a new single strategy for copyright and whether you, and there's some students and teachers that don't actually follow this rule so do you already have this in your program? This is a legal question and I am not a lawyer so I hold myself back. There are groups that have dealt with this, done something similar, and we would enjoy support, but we're not lawyers. Chaos does school, is open, so we would enjoy any participators who know more. In Hamburg, there's someone who did something about this, so I might be able to connect you. Did you think of uh, setting up a wiki or maybe a collection of links in this topic? Yes, there is a collection of links. I don't know when it was updated the last time. But so much is happening in this area that new, new things are coming, um, being added all the time. And we're happy when we are able to prepare things in time for our talks at schools and perhaps we don't have the most up-to-date uh, stand um, status. You guys had a list of organizations that you've networked with and a lot of that was from the technology area. Did you already try to reach out to education or more children um, centered groups? There's a lot and we don't mean to intend to say that we stand alone. In Hamburg there's the initiative to net connect the Hamburg initiatives together um, nationally. Of course, there's a broad um, spectrum of things, and of course, we would be happy if more would happen in this area. Do you also mention that in working in the working world in Germany, if you want to introduce technology that controls what people do or how or where they are, do you show them that their um, the Gewerkschaften, the workers' unions need to be involved? 
Usually we start with this after class eight, but um, up, as to now, we haven't done much in this area. In the seventh or eighth class, you could It's more about participation. The way I thought about this is, was more about participation, but I'll come back later. Ultra kurz, weil Jens und meine Frage ist: OER, Open Education Resources, also frei verfügbare Lernmittel, ihr habt wunderbar präsentiert. Ähm, macht ihr auch äh, so Leitfäden? So soll es dann bei den Schülern gezeigt werden und so als Lehrer Background Papier dazu noch. Mir geht es also um die Multiplikation. Do you use this as open education resources? That is, do you have wikis or some sort of guidelines that show teachers how to use them? This is an important topic. We would gladly deal with this, but in our in our free time, but we haven't done that much up to now. Often the question is, do you want to walk with the multiplicators, the teachers, or with the students? So, sometimes, if some external person from the CCC comes, um, this can have a, a different effect on children than if uh, it's simply your teacher uh, sharing information and giving um, instructions about what one should do online. Up to now, we haven't done so much in that area. <laughs> There's actually programs that would fund this. We have no more time. Any other questions you can ask later? And this room has a long break. Thank you very much for listening. We are happy for feedback. Just tweet your feedback.